Moon Eastgate gear drives, the new kid on the block, aiming to bring precision, high quality gear drives down to a very reasonable and affordable price. What are they like and how do you install them? We're gonna cover all of that on today's video. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Lee and I'm a DIY electric skateboard builder. And if that sort of thing interests you, consider tickling that subscribe button below. And on today's episode, we are gonna be talking about the Moon Drive. What do I think about it and how do we install these on a hanger to go from this to this? So gear drives, what are they and why would you want them for your build? Well, in order to talk about gear drives, we have to go back in history just a little bit and talk about how we got to this point. Originally, when we started electric skateboarding, everybody used belt drives and belt drives are still used quite widely. However, they do have certain disadvantages. One, they're normally open and you can get rubbish inside them. Number two, belts do snap quite a lot. And with them being open to the elements, you get sun, you get rain, you get the cold, degrades the belts, eventually they snap. We did move on to chain drives. And unfortunately, chain drives also have some disadvantages as well. One being the very, very noisy and also the wheel pinions are massive, so ground clearance is a bit of a problem. However, they're a lot more reliable than belts. And then possibly the founding father of gear drives, Jens Kappel from Etox, came up with a gear drive. And a gear drive is two pinions, one rotates the other, and the relationship between those two gears determines the reduction in the gearing and therefore what the top speed and the torque of your build is going to be. Up until now, gear drives have been very, very expensive. If you want a budget, you could only really choose between belt and chain drive, but enter the moon drives. The moon drive aims to bring precision engineered gear drives down to a super affordable price of just 260 pounds. Made of precision CNC'd 6061 aluminium, 3K carbon fiber twill, carbon steel and Delrin wheel spurs, this is a precision engineered gear drive at an incredible price that anybody can afford. Available in multiple different ratios from 3.14 all the way down to 5.0. These gear drives can be used with multiple different wheel sizes from six inch wheels all the way to nine inch wheels. And currently I'm personally testing an 80 pinion for Moon, which will bring the ratio to 5.5. And I've been discussing with him recently about how to get these all the way down to 5.9 to one, which is an incredibly torquey drive and definitely something I'm super interested in myself. Now Moon is my friend and we do talk quite a lot and I have had quite a lot of input into the direction that these gear drives have gone over the last few months, which is super, super cool. Being able to have input into the direction of these has been fantastic and I've really enjoyed watching these become a more mature product and now I say we're finally at the point where these are just everything that most people have been looking for in a gear drive for 260 pounds which is super super cool these are also available with multiple different clamp types these can fit mbs matrix 2 trucks they can fit all of the tramper trucks they can fit moon's own up and coming rkps and some other trucks that will be out very very soon the wheel hub also has multiple patterns in it so that you can fit rockstar twos five stars tramper wheels to this you can even fit the bergmeisters to this as well if, if you so please they're just really, really versatile. The parts are cheap and the quality is high. So then guys, there's only one thing left to do and that's to show you how to get your freshly delivered moon drive from this state into this state, fully fitted with motors, ready to go just to attach your wheels to. So let's get into it. 
So then guys, before you tackle a build like this, you're gonna to need to make sure you've got the right tools. You're gonna to need a three and a four millimeter Allen key or socket set, preferably a socket set will make it much easier to torque the bolts up. You're also going to need some Loctite. I recommend Loctite 243 and Loctite 638. And depending on how long your motor shaft is, you're also going to need a Dremel with a black cutting wheel and a grindstone attachment. Because these gear drives are actually super thin, and that is one of the reasons why these only weigh 612 grams each, you can't have a huge motor shaft. So you might have to trim that down if you've got a motor with a longer shaft. And that is about it guys, really very, very minimal tools required to build this. And Moon has been super careful to design this in a way that you only need one tool com to completely disassemble these gear drives, just a three millimeter Allen key or socket will, will completely disassemble the whole drive. Now our build today is going to be using these flip ski motors on the Moon drives onto this mountain board hanger. Obviously, as we talked about, Earlier, you could have a number of different hangers here and a number of different wheels and a number of different motors that all work with this gear drive. So just take the principles of what we're talking about today and apply it to your build. Now, when you receive this gear drive, it's going to come fully assembled and that is for your own benefit. It allows you to be able to take the drive apart for installation. And then when you do that, you realize how it is built and how it goes back together. It's actually not that complicated, but we are going to cover it step by step now. So the first thing we need to do is we need to remove these six hub bolts out of the wheel hub. This is with the three millimeter Allen key or the socket. Just remove these six bolts and the wheel hub will pop right off. Then underneath you can see the V-ring which just comes off very, very easily. Bear in mind the way that this goes guys, the V part, the thin part goes against the carbon fiber. Remember that for when you're putting it back together. And then the next stage is to just remove all of these bolts on the carbon fiber that retain the lid down. Once they're removed, you can just pop the carbon fiber piece off and remove the wheel spur. You can see here one of the innovations of this gear drive is the way the wheel spur fits onto the clamp with this large bearing. This makes it super reliable and it runs really, really nicely like this. It's one of my favorite things of this gear drive. And once that's removed, you can flip the drive over and you can see the second innovation that I really like with this gear drive, and that is the angle adjustment on the other side. These four bolts will allow you to adjust your angle to pretty much any degree you like. Just remove those and the clamp separates from the shell and it's as simple as that the drive is fully disassembled so the first thing i do when i'm putting this together is i put some blue tape around the hanger that's going to protect the hanger from the shell Next, you wanna take the shell and you wanna put it onto the hanger before you slip the clamp over the end. This is why we put the blue tape on the hanger, it's to prevent any scratches from the shell as we get this part done. You'll notice on the clamp, there are four bolts retaining it onto the hanger. You want to slowly and gently tighten these up until all the bolts are touching the hanger. And then you wanna go around one by one, take them out, apply Loctite two, four, three, and put them back in. It's very important that you get this clamp square. If this is not square onto the hanger, your whole gear drive is gonna be out of kilter and it's gonna be a major problem. So take the time to make sure it's square, check and double check it. Trust me guys, you want to have this square first time. Now it's time to flip it over and put the four bolts in the back that determine the angle of the gear drive. Don't worry if you don't get this right first time. Have a bit of a guess, see where you want it at. You can always go back in later and change the angle before you put the motors on. Once the motors are on, it's pretty difficult to change the angle because one of the bolts is quite close to the motor. So you want to have a guess now and then later on, just offer it up to your deck and see if it fits. And if it doesn't, you can always adjust the angle later. Again, apply Loctite 243 to the bolts and bolt them in. So the next thing to do is to apply the motor pinion to the shaft. The motor pinion must be nine millimeters from the face of the motor. You can use a ruler or like I did, 
a pair of calipers to measure that nine millimeters and you can slide the pinion down until it is exactly in the right place. Take a marker, I'm using a Sharpie here, and mark the shaft where it will need to be cut before removing the motor pinion. If you need a little bit of heat, apply a little bit of heat to the motor pinion and it will come off a lot easier. Some of them are a little bit tight because obviously the motor shafts have different tolerances. If you get one like that, just apply a bit of heat and it'll pop right off. Now it's time to get the Dremel with the black cutting disc in it and chop the axle. This won't take very long at all, probably a minute maximum to cut right through that shaft and you should be able to get it fairly square by hand. It doesn't really matter. Once that's done, it's time to get the Loctite 638. Now this is the green stuff. It's a super set in Loctite. It will set very, very quickly. So once you apply this, you need to work quickly. Put it on the motor shaft, put it where the key goes, put the key into the motor and slide the pinion back on. Gently tap the pinion down into position and get it back to that nine millimeters from the face of the motor. It, depending on the ambient temperature, you've probably got between 30 and 60 seconds to get that in the right place before it sets. Just work super quickly, have all your tools laid out ready to go, get it in position and the Loctite will set. I leave mine for about 10 minutes just to go off. And then if there's any motor shaft protruding out of the pinion, get the grindstone attachment on the Dremel and just take that down until it's level with the pinion. You don't want any shaft sticking out above the pinion because it will interfere with the carbon fiber case. Once that's done, it's time to fit the motors to the gear drive and you'll see another awesome innovation that I really like about these gear drives. As it stands at the time of making this video, if you are using a 9T pulley, you can use the fixed holes in the gear drive to attach your motor. That means that you do not have to worry about the backlash adjustments and it means that your, your gears will never go out of lash, which is absolutely fantastic because that is what destroys 99% of gears is the motor pinion coming away from the wheel spur and shredding the teeth. So that's impossible to do with the 90 pinion. If you've got one of the other pinions, you'll have to use the slotted holes to adjust it and get the backlash set correctly. Now, Adjusting backlash is out of the scope of this video, but I will say that you want to get those gears as close as possible, but with some slight movement. That is essentially how I do it. I don't use paper or anything like that. I just get them as close as I possibly can, but still leaving the slightest amount of movement. I actually do think that the backlash setting for the 90 pinion here could even be a little bit closer, but I guess Moon is working within certain tolerances, so he doesn't want to get them super, super close. However, it's perfectly awesome where it is, and that'll work just fine. Next, you want to slide the wheel spur gear on, uh, making sure to align the two gears up as you push them down so you don't damage the plastic wheel spur. And then you want to pop the carbon fiber case back on, and put all the bolts back in, again with a bit of Loctite 243 to make sure they don't back out, before grabbing the V-ring, applying a little bit of EP2 lithium grease to the underside and slipping it over the end of the wheel spur. Then it's just a case of attaching the hub adapter back onto the wheel spur with the six countersunk bolts. Make sure you don't use any Loctite on this, guys, because these are screwing into plastic, which is self-tightening, and you don't want to use Loctite with plastic because it actually melts it. When you put these countersunk bolts in, you want to do them in a star pattern to make sure they torque up evenly. And then you are basically done, guys. The last thing to mention is spacers. In the kit, you will get a bag of spacers. They'll have there'll be two big spacers and there'll be a load of shims. Depending on the wheel you're using, depends on how many of those spaces you need. So just make sure that you offer the wheel you, you, that you're using up to the gear drive and check how many spaces you need between the, bear, the inner bearing seat basically and the gear drive. In the box, you also will get a load of longer hub screws. So get your wheel, take the bolts out the wheel and use the bolts from the kit to bolt it back to the wheel hub. 
again in a star pattern to make sure that it's all evenly torqued down. Right, okay guys, that is one side done. Obviously the blue tape is for keeping everything tidy and scratch free. We're gonna go and do the other side now and I'll be back in a minute for my final thoughts and we'll wrap this video up. And that is it guys, this is my drivetrain. This is actually isn't for me, this is for a friend of mine. He asked me to put this together for him, but we are done. So I wanna show you how to grease these things up because I get asked a lot, what grease should I use and how much grease should I put in a gear drive? And I have my own opinions about that. Actually, to be honest, I prefer not to use any grease in my gear drive, shock horror, I know. A lot of people don't use grease at all because grease attracts dirt and really with the wheel spurs being so cheap they will wear down quicker without any grease but it really isn't a problem to be honest um, but if you do want to use grease which is totally fine and i guess if you're a newbie you probably do want to use grease don't use too much at all it's much better to do little and often rather than absolutely packing these drives with grease. I just, yeah, that really, I see some people like absolutely packing the drives out with grease and that is just no good guys because it's going to come out of all of the seams of the drives. It's going to, mud's going to, yeah, you don't want, you just, you just don't want to do that. The grease I use is this. Silverline EP2. Any EP2 lithium grease is good. The reason why I like this so much is it has a nozzle and also it's super cheap. So to be honest, I've only had one other tube of this the whole time I've been riding gear drives and this is 50% full. I really do not put a lot of grease in. I'm gonna show you what I do. It's gonna be up to you to decide how much you put in ultimately. I'm just gonna show you what I do. You don't have to copy me. You can put in as much or as little as you want yourself. So at the end of the drive here is a little grease port with a grub screw in it. Carefully remove that and put it to one side. And this is much easier to do when this is strapped to a board and you've got a big wheel on here. But what I do is turn it, listen to the noise. And then what I do while it's on the board is I squirt grease in here and turn the wheel at the same time. It's gonna be quite tricky to do. Oh, on the bench. Eventually you'll hear that that grease has completely quieten the drive down. And that is as much grease as you need, guys. You really do not want to put any more than that in there. Job done. That is the gear drive greased. I recommend that you keep an eye on it and you apply grease like that regularly, probably once every 100 miles, maybe 75 miles. Just make it part of your pre-ride checks just to listen to the sound of drives and apply it a bit more. It's much better to do little and often than loads at once, trust me. And that is it guys, that is how you install moon drives on a hanger with the motors in a nutshell. Um, I hope that those of you out there that have already got them will comment in the comments saying how you're getting on with them. And if you are considering getting some gear drives, definitely give moon a consideration. I'm supposed to be getting an affiliate code, but I haven't got one yet. So if there is one, I'll drop it into the comments below. But other than that guys, at 260 pounds, they're an absolute bargain.